Okay friends, it's time to get started on our job. One of the first things you want to do is safely raise and support the front of your vehicle so the wheels off the ground and the suspension is hanging. Now the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and move to our center cap. If you were to look along the center cap and the rim, you're going to find a little slot. You can use a small pry bar, carefully get in between, but be careful not to damage your wheel. Go ahead and pop that off of there. We'll give it a quick inspection. Set it aside. After that, go ahead and remove all five of your 19 millimeter lug nuts and then the wheel. Let's move along to the outer tie rod end. Generally on these, you're gonna find some sort of locking cotter pin. Go ahead and remove that and then remove the nut. Now we can remove the nut with a 21 millimeter. <coughs> Lift your outer tie rod end out of the knuckle. Give it a quick inspection. Go ahead and set that aside. Now let's move along to the other side of the knuckle where the brake caliper is going to be located. We're going to have to remove two 18 millimeter headed bolts for the caliper bracket. There's one here and there's one just right above it. Let's go ahead and remove the pair. As I start removing it, I'm gonna go ahead and fully remove the first one, put it back in a couple threads, and then I'll just go ahead and remove the second one. After I get the second one completely out, I can fully remove the first. It's a good idea to inspect the bolts as you go. Let's carefully grab that caliper. We're gonna slide it off of the rotor. Once you have it off, it's a good idea to just take a peek at the brakes. You wanna make sure they don't look like they're worn at an angle, and also make sure it doesn't look like you can see any fluid. If you do, it's probably brake fluid, and that's no good. You'd have to replace the caliper. This one looks fine, so I'm gonna put it aside, making sure I put no pressure on my flex hose. Remove your rotor, inspect it, set it aside. Let's remove our 30 millimeter axle nut. The next thing you're going to want to do is use a hammer and a punch. We're going to come right in the center of the axle and try to break it free from the wheel bearing. You can see right in here, there's some splines. If yours looks like it's rusted, just apply a little bit of penetrant. Once you're sure it's broken free, we can continue on to our upper ball joint nut. Let's use an 18 millimeter to remove this nut. Go ahead and take that nut and put it on just a couple threads. Not very much so it feels like it's bottomed out against anything. Just so when we go ahead and bonk this to break it free, the knuckle can't fall down and potentially hurt you. So now that we have that separated, let's continue on by removing the nut for the ball joint. We can lift this up. We'll carefully set this down and aside, being very careful not to put a tug on our axle. Now we have access to our upper ball joint. To get the ball joint out of the control arm, the easiest way to press this up and out is to remove the boot and then cut the stud flush so you have something to press against and press the ball joint out of the control arm. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut the boot off of here. Generally, there's a metal clamp up along the top.
remove that boot. Let's go ahead and wipe down the area, give it a quick inspection. Now when I cut the stud, I want to cut as close to this bushing as possible, right up along this area. Now it's gonna be time to get ready to use our ball joint press. Now with the ball joint press, you're also gonna to need to have some adapter cups. Typically they come in a set. The cup that you're gonna to wanna to use to remove this has to fit over the top of the ball joint but press directly against the control arm. Now we'll just go ahead and bring this right up against the ball joint stud that we cut off and then we can continue tightening it. It's going to force the ball joint up and into this cup and then it'll remove it from the control arm. Make sure you get this as straight as possible for safety's sake. Now of course you're going to want to use a socket that fits your particular ball joint press. Ours is a 22 millimeter socket. The area that you want to watch is right up in here. Once it's pressed out of the control arm, you can remove the apparatus. Remove what's left of the ball joint. Next, you're gonna to wanna to clearly inspect your control arm. You need to make sure it looks like it's still in good condition. If it looks like it's rotted or damaged in the area that the ball joint needs to press into, you need to replace the entire control arm. Okay, friends, now it's time to get ready to install our brand new upper ball joint. Let's take that ball joint and we're gonna put it directly into position. You can tell where the splines are supposed to line up with right down into its corresponding hole. Now the next thing I always do is just make sure that the stud looks like it's nice and straight. If it's a little bit off kilter, it could potentially get caught on the next step. Now we're gonna need a whole bunch of adapters. The adapters that you want is something that's gonna be able to make it over this entire shaft and press directly up against the control arm. Keep in mind that as you press this down, the shaft will come down. So if you just use one cup and it has a flat bottom on the bottom, it might potentially hit up against there and you're gonna cause serious damage to the ball joint. So make sure you're using a hollow one. You're also gonna need another adapter that just gives us a little bit more space, but it also has a flat bottom so we can put the driver right up against that. Now up along the top of the ball joint, this is something that's super important. Looking in the center, you can see a metallic ring. You don't wanna press on that center circle. You only wanna press on the outer aspect along this edge here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get this in position. We'll take an upper cup, put it right on there. Now, of course, we'll take our two lower cups, what we talked about before, put them in position. This one's going directly up against the control arm and it's not hitting up against the ball joint boot in any way. Now, I'll just go ahead and take this one and all I'm gonna do is put it upside down first so I can get my tool in here. Once I start pressing this down, I'm gonna pause, double check to make sure my stud's coming where it needs to and then of course I'll turn this around so it's a nice hollow area and that's how we'll finish it off. Take your time getting everything lined up perfectly. It's extremely important to make sure everything is in a straight line. Now at this point, I'm gonna start compressing this area. It's gonna start forcing the ball joint down into the control arm. Once again, we need to make sure we're going straight and we wanna make sure that we do not damage the stud that's making its way through the center of this. All right, 
I started bringing this down. I'm gonna pause, I'm gonna double check to make sure that my shaft is exactly where I need it to be and I'm gonna turn over my lower cup. Okay. So now, I went ahead and I switched my stuff around. I pressed it in the rest of the way. I'll get this apart so you can have a look. Looking up along the top of this, you wanna make sure that the top of the ball joint is pressed directly up against the control arm, like I said before. Assuming that looks good, double check the boot. Make sure you didn't put a tear in it. Now we can move along to pushing the knuckle over. We'll line the ball joint up and we can start our nut on. Let's put the nut on the upper ball joint. Let's go ahead and bottom this out and then we'll torque it to 41 foot pounds. Let's get the outer tie rod in place. Once it's in, go ahead and put on your nut. Now we'll torque this to 52 foot pounds. After that, you know what to do. Make sure that the slot matches up with the hole, put in your locking cotter pin. Now the next thing that you're gonna to wanna to do before you go ahead and put the rotor on is to pay attention to the hub mating surface here. We wanna make sure that it's clean and free of any debris. And then after that, just apply some copper never seize. Also, looking at the back side of your rotor, you wanna make sure that right here, where it's supposed to mate up against that wheel bearing is nice and clean and free of debris as well. Assuming everything looks good, let's go ahead and put the rotor on. Now at this point, I always just put one of my lug nuts on there only to hold the rotor in place while I continue. Now I'm gonna go ahead and clean down the rotor braking surface on the outer aspect and on the inner aspect. You can just go ahead and wipe this down and turn it as needed. Now it's gonna be time to get ready to remount our caliper. Before you do, make sure you clean the threads on your mounting bolt and apply some red thread locker. Now, when we put the caliper in place, you wanna pay special attention to the flex hose itself. When it goes up on here, you wanna make sure that it doesn't look like it's twisted like a pigtail in any way. That's gonna restrict brake flow. Let's go ahead and start in both of our mounting bolts. After we have them started in, we can bottom them out and torque them to manufacturer specification. Once you have them snug, go ahead and torque each of them to 90 foot-pounds. Now let's continue on to putting on our axle nut. For this, typically I'm gonna use some red thread locker. We'll take the nut and put it right on there. Now at this point, you're gonna to wanna to bottom this out by hand with a ratchet. You never wanna use an air tool on this because you don't wanna compress the bearing in any way. Let's remove our lug nut. Now we can get the wheel up on here. At this point, you're gonna to wanna to start on all of your lug nuts, bottom them out, get the wheel back on the ground, and then we can continue on by torquing our lug nuts to 100 foot pounds. With the wheel safely back on the ground, we can continue on torquing our lug nuts to 100 foot-pounds. Now we can torque the axle nut to 184 foot-pounds. If you have a center cover, go ahead and put that on now. Make sure you line up the back with all of your lug nuts. 
Okay friends, we got the truck back together. What's left to do now? Now typically when you do something like this, you're gonna wanna make sure that you get yourself safely down to your local alignment shop. Thank you for watching.